It's Friday, April the 10th. Good Friday. As everyone's preparing for an Easter weekend during this COVID-19, it's amazing how people have learned to keep a social distance from each other and how things which we just used to accept as normal have changed. But as the real estate problems begin to unfold, and there are so many real estate problems, that it is also possible to begin to pick where the winners and losers are going to be on the other side of this problem. Now, <clears throat> as I'm thinking about this summer, and my goal, as I've said, is to be one of those people standing on July the 1st, because I think that's when we're going to get the real first break in the uh, COVID-19 quarantining separation and people will begin to get back to what they're doing. There may be some restart in May. Um, people will begin to be a little tepid about getting out, I think, in May. June will be a little better. And by the end of June, things might even appear to be normal, at least for another 90 or 120 days after that. But the winners and losers are already shaping up. And the first real winner, what I consider to be the low risk category, is single family detached rental property. Not multifamily property, not urban property, single family detached. People are going to want to be able to control their own front door and to have enough space to store at least 14 days of toilet paper. It, the, in Knoxville, and markets of similar size, the, I do strongly believe that the desire to live in multi-story uh, apartment buildings, converted office buildings in the urban setting, the downtown area, is significantly reduced. And a lot of people who own those apartments right now are going to be rethinking how they use those apartments or those condominiums. And there's certainly going to be a really strong long-term demand from the repositioning of people into single-family detached rental properties. There, there will, of course, be buyers. There will be demand from the buying public, but we'll get into that in a later video. The second real clear winner is going to be ambient storage, not the multi-story uh, climate controlled concrete buildings that we've become so popular in the investment community. But the classic mom and pop ambient storage where you drive up on uh, a road, a driveway, a gravel driveway to your own door that you are in control of. And the small units will be the ones that will be significantly in demand because the people who can't get out of the urban apartments or who are confined to much smaller houses are going to want to rent something for some long period of time in which they can store their 14-day supply of toilet paper, canned food, and bottled water. The, this whole idea of social distancing and how people are separating from each other in grocery stores and the absolute lack of the uh, supply uh, availability of what people consider to be essentials is going to change the way people will react going forward. The third category, and this is, these are in levels of risk, let's say. The third category uh, is anything that can build the federal government or any, any operation that will build the federal government and or an insurance company. So if you have an, so it's really the business to be able to be an investor in a business that bills the government or bills an insurance company. And that is um, a little trickier area to get into, but that is certainly going to be a market that has unlimited potential as we continue to go forward. What those particular businesses or industries might be will also be a later video. And the fourth area, which has already been very popular, but which will be even more popular going forward, will be mobile home parks. The mo a mobile home park where everybody is in control of their, again, their own front door 
and the homes are more than 20 feet apart will be an extremely desirable purchase opportunity. The problem with mobile home parks is being able to, first, the cost of entry to get in, similar to businesses that build the federal government, very costly to get into. Mobile home parks, in general, are very expensive to get into and have a tenant population that can be extremely problematic to manage. But the risk factor for the people that are living there is very low relative to any building in which you have to get into a six by six elevator, go up to the 14th floor to your apartment. Those investments are going to be big losers in the future. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. If you believe I'm giving good information, please subscribe to the channel and send me any comments that you would like me to that you would like me to express a view on as to what will be or won't be investments in the future. Thank you very much.